Good morning and welcome to Bethany City Church Online for a very special service. This is Back to School Sunday. Just a second. That's much better. My name's Andrew and I'm a teacher and I'm actually speaking to you from my children's treehouse at the moment, bizarrely. This is a place where I was actually teaching my class over the last few months because it's the only place that I've got a whiteboard at. So I thought that we might have a bit of fun this morning and use that. So back to school Sunday, it's all about us thinking about how we're feeling about going back to school. Many of us have already returned this week. How's it been? What's it been like? We'd love to know. Um, some of us might be going back next week. Some of us might be parents. Some of us might be teachers who are watching. Um, and this service is all about thinking about those people, praying about those people, and speaking to God about heading back into school. Now, when returning to school, whether a pupil or a staff member, you may well have some of these. You may well have some worries. Bible does have plenty to say about how to clear our mind of some of these concerns. Sometimes we might wonder what lies ahead in the days and weeks to come, but if we turn to the book of Psalms, there's a lovely bit of encouragement for us. The Lord is close to everyone who prays, to all who truly pray to him. He gives those who fear him what they want. He listens when they cry. And he saves them. And that's from Psalm 145, verses 18 to 19. This Bible verse is a wonderful reminder that God not only hears us when we pray, but he actually wants us to come close to him. So let's do that now. Let's come to God in prayer. Lord God, thank you that you are close when we talk to you. Thank you that you listen to us, that your son Jesus came to die to save us that you love us deeply. Thank you that you hear the cries of our heart. As we come together this morning, may we be aware of your presence. Help us to listen to your words in the Bible. Help us to know what you want to teach us. Give us hearts that long to obey you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let's now praise and thank God for hearing our prayers by worshipping him together.
love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king of all Well, as if we needed reminding, these little bundles of fun have been off for some time now. So we're going to watch some of the photographs that have been sent in from the children from Bethany City Church as to what they've been up to over the last few months. Shall we do that, Sonny? Yeah. Yeah, sounds good. Say, so roll the photos. Roll photos. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness. I will follow you home, my lighthouse, my lighthouse. I will trust the promise. You will carry me safe to shore, safe to shore, safe to shore. Wrestling and in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence, in the silence, you won't let go. In the questions, your truth will hold. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my 
Hello, I'm Tim and I work as an associate head teacher, which means that I work alongside other head teachers to get things done. Not many people know this, but head teachers aren't actually paid for teaching. Instead, they get paid for worrying. So the more children and teachers there are in a school, the more head teacher will get paid because they'll have more worries. Sure, if your head teacher is responsible for a few schools, then they'll be paid millions because they'll have millions of worries. Now, with most of you being out of school for a fair bit of time, you've probably been a bit worried about going back. Or if you have returned, you might be a bit worried since things are different from how they were. Worrying is natural, but you don't need to stress because your head teacher is being paid to do all the worrying for you. How good is that? Your teachers, well, they'll have been working really hard to get things ready for you to return. And they'll have been in endless meetings, listening to lots of information in order to make sure you have a great time. The only thing you need to do for them is to make sure that you work really hard and you follow what's likely to be a new set of school rules. You can have confidence that everything's going to be great when you go back. After all, schools tested out everything on the year six reception and nursery children and they were fine so you'll be great when you do go back and if you are worried remember there's always someone to talk to your teacher your friend someone at home don't bottle things up remember jesus told us not to worry so try not to let your head teacher do it instead so as you return to school or as you settle into school try these things first of all be friendly and kind to your friends, since they might be worried. I know you won't be, but they might be. Be kind to your teacher. Sometimes worries can be catching, and head teachers don't mean to, but sometimes they can pass their worries on. And then finally, and this is the most important thing, have fun and make the most of being in school. It's not a bad place to be. Dear God, Please help our friends who have started secondary school. Help them to adjust quickly to a new way of learning. We also pray for those people who have started university. Help them to know you are with them as they begin this next stage of their life. Amen. Lord Jesus, I pray for those who start new schools. Um, and I pray that you'll really encourage them, bless them um, and help them to make new friends um, who are lovely to them. And I pray that uh, you'll give everyone who's going to a new school or going to a new year group um, loads of courage to just um, stick through this difficult time. Amen. Dear God, we pray for all the little kids that are starting nursery in school and secondary school. We hope that goes really well and that you are all safe. Love, Alex and Archie. 
Amen. Jesus, I pray for all of the people who are starting college and university. Lord, this has been such a difficult time for those this year that have done their GCSEs and A-levels. Um, but Lord, I thank you that you are so much bigger than that and um, that you have a plan and that you have a purpose. And I pray for your blessing upon these young people um, as they start college or university and um, that they will know that your presence is with them and that this will be a really exciting new chapter in their life and that your word will be a lamp to their feet. Amen.
When you hear the name Daniel, what do you imagine? Maybe you're called Daniel, or perhaps you know somebody who is called Daniel. Well, the Daniel that we're going to be looking at this morning, uh, today, is the Daniel in the Bible. That Daniel lived a long, long, long time ago, approximately 600 years before Jesus was born. He had many, many great adventures. After Jesus and Paul in the Bible, Daniel is my favourite character because he is a man of integrity and a man of prayer. Jenny is going to read Daniel chapter 6 to us right now. Daniel chapter 6 verses 1 to 10. Darius the Mede decided to divide the kingdom into 120 provinces and he appointed a high officer to rule over each province. The king also chose Daniel and two others as administrators to supervise the high officers and protect the king's interests. Daniel soon proved himself more capable than all the other administrators and high officers. Because of Daniel's great ability, the king made plans to place him over the entire empire. Then the other administrators and high officers began searching for some fault in the way Daniel was handling government affairs, but they couldn't find anything to criticise or condemn. He was faithful, always responsible and completely trustworthy. So they concluded our only chance of finding grounds for accusing Daniel will be in connection with the rules of his religion. So the administrators and high officers went to the king and said, Long live King Darius. We are, we are all in agreement, we administrators, officials, high officers, advisers and governors, that the king should make a law that will be stick, strictly enforced. Give, the, give orders that for the next 30 days, any person who prays to anyone, divine or human, except to you, your majesty, will be thrown into the den of lions and now your majesty issue and sign this law so it cannot be changed in official law on official law of the Medes and Persians that cannot be revoked so King Darius signed the law but when Daniel learned that had been signed he went home and knelt down as usual in his upstairs room with its windows open towards Jerusalem. He prayed three times a day, just as he has always done, giving thanks to his God. My first point is that prayer shapes us. It isn't always easy to follow rules. King Darius couldn't be everywhere at once, and he ruled over a very large kingdom. For that reason, he chose reliable, responsible leaders to make sure people were keeping his rules. One of them was Daniel, or as we may know him as Belteshazzar. It's a bit like what happens in school. Your head teacher is in charge like Mr. Cassop, but he or she asks others to help so the school runs smoothly. Perhaps some of you watching this morning help a teacher or a head teacher Perhaps you are acting monitors or mediators or buddies to younger students. In secondary school, you might be a prefect or a head of the house or even a head boy or a head girl. Hopefully, like Daniel, you are given responsibility because you can be trusted and people think well of you. Daniel stood out from the crowd. He was trustworthy. He wasn't lazy and he didn't cheat. In school, I wonder what that might look like today. It might be working hard. Perhaps it's not being late for class. Perhaps it's getting your homework in on time. Helping others. Perhaps it's keeping your promises or listening well or being respectful and kind. If you do these things, people will notice. Sometimes, however, we don't always do things with the best motives. Here's an example. So when I was growing up at the Sunday school at Hetton IM, there was a competition on over the summer. Whoever could bring the most new people to church, even if they just visited for one week, got a tally on the wall. And whoever had the most tallies at the end of the six-week period 
won the best prize imaginable to go and see the Chuckle Brothers live at Sunderland Empire. For me, that was the best the best prize there could be. So, I, you know, phone your friends, go around, knock on the doors. Uh, you've got to come to church. It would be great to see you at church on Sunday. You know, can we arrange a lift? Can we get you around? And across the six-week period, uh, my mother picked up friends on a Sunday morning, brought them to church for the first time. I got that wonderful point, And then off they went. I wasn't bothered if they came back. The point was... I was going to see the Chuckle Brothers live. At the end of the competition, I'd won. I don't know how many friends I'd brought to church, but it was definitely the most by far. And I suppose that was an example of me doing the right thing for the wrong reason. I wasn't bothered that people were coming to church to get to know Jesus for themselves, uh, to to better themselves in many ways. It was, you know what, come to church and I get to see the Chuckle Brothers. What more could you ask for? Thanks. (laughs) Biblical Daniel. Wasn't quite like Bethany Daniel when he was young. Daniel loved and trusted God so much and that shaped who he was. Daniel always worked hard. He did this so his life would bring honour to God. Not so he would just become rich or famous. God gave Daniel success. He caused the king to give Daniel a promotion. God loved Daniel and Daniel loved God. And Daniel allowed God to be in charge. And as a result, God was the one who was shaping Daniel's life for him. God is pleased when you live for him rather than living for ourselves. We might hear people around us say that you can map your own life or map your own future or the future is in your own hands. But the Bible tells us that only God knows our future. So let's be like Daniel and trust God to shape our lives for us. The more time we spend with God, the more he changes our thinking and our attitudes to be more like Jesus Christ. You see, three times a day, Daniel got down on his knees and he prayed. Wow, what a guy. This is why Daniel is one of my favorite characters in the Bible. He didn't just pray a a quick prayer in the morning or a brief thank you prayer at night because he prayed often. He became the kind of person God wanted him to be. You see, prayer really shapes us. His strength and trust were in God, not in himself. His focus wasn't on what great things he could do, but what great things God could do through him. Remember back in our Bible reading when the king made a new law that put people who prayed to God in danger. Did Daniel stop praying? Not at all. Did he pray to King Darius instead? Certainly not. When he heard about the new rule, he did as he always did. He went up to his room. He knelt down and he prayed. Even when the king's new law was introduced, Daniel prayed and thanked God, the Bible says, just as he had always done. Taking everything to God in prayer was normal for Daniel. And he wasn't going to stop now. He thanked God as he usually did before asking him for help. Prayer made a big difference in Daniel's life. Why is prayer still important for us today? I wonder. Do you ever ask that question? Well, let's find out. Let's play a game. I want to play Family Fortunes with us now. So we asked 100 Christians that question. And we have five of the most popular answers ready to reveal. But before I reveal... The answers to the question, why is prayer so important today? I want you in your homes or if you're in a, in a group to chat through it. If you're by yourself, just ask, ask the question, why is prayer so important today? You've got 30 seconds as the countdown goes and then we will reveal the answers from 100 Christians. Chat between yourself. Okay, time's up. 
You should have a table of the answers on your screen right now. So, number one, the most important reason to pray out of the results of 100 people is because it is vital for our relationship with God. 98 people out of 100 said this. Remember the Bible verse we read at the start. It tells us this too. The Lord is close to everyone who prays. Psalm 145 verse 8. 80. Number two, 61 out of 100 people said we pray because God cares for us. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, give all your worries to him because he cares for you. A great reason to pray. Number three, with 46 votes in our survey, it said that we pray because we need God's help. Jesus told his disciples to say, give us today our daily bread. Matthew 6 verse 11. God is a good father who wants to provide for his children and so we ask him for help. Number four. Close behind with 42 votes. Is that it is the most important to thank God and praise God. Psalm 100 verse for tells us, come into his courtyards with songs of praise. Thank him and praise his name. Number five and finally, 36 people said that prayer is important in order to listen to God. Proverbs 1, and verse 23 give great advice. It says this, you foolish people, listen when I correct you. I will tell you what is in my heart. I will tell you what I am thinking. Prayer quietens us. It helps us to listen to God. With that in mind, please let us turn uh, to Daniel chapter 6 and Alex is going to read the rest of the chapter. Today's reading is taken from Daniel chapter 6 verses 11 to 20 years. Then these men came by agreement and found Daniel making petition and plea before his God. Then they came near and said before the king concerning the injunction, O oh, king, did you not sign an injunction that anyone who makes petition to any god or man within thirty days except to you, O oh, king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, The thing stands fast according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which cannot be revoked. Then they answered and said before the king, Daniel, who is one of the exiles of Judah, pays no attention to you, O king, or the injunction you have signed, but makes his petition three times a day. Then the king, when he heard these words, was much distressed and set his mind to deliver Daniel. And he laboured till the sun went down to rescue him. Then these men came by agreement to the king and said to the king, No, O king, that it is a law of the Medes and Persians that no injunction or ordinance that the king establishes can be changed. And the king commanded, and Daniel was brought and cast into the den of lions. The king declared to Daniel, May your God, whom you serve continually, deliver you. And a stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den. And the king sealed it with his own signet and with the signet of his laws, that nothing might be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his palace and spent the night fasting. No diversions were brought to him and sleep fled from him. Then, at break of day, the king arose and went in haste 
to the den of lions. As he came near to the den where Daniel was, he cried out in a tone of anguish. The king declared to Daniel, Oh, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to deliver you from the lions? Then Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angel and shut the lions' mouths. And they have not harmed me, because I was found blameless before him and also before you. O king, I have done no harm. Then the king was exceedingly glad and commanded that Daniel, commanded that Daniel be taken up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no kind of harm was found on him. Because he had trusted in his God. Then King Darius wrote to all the peoples, nations and languages that dwell in all the earth. Peace be multiplied to you. I make a decree that all my royal dominion people are to tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. For he is the living God, enduring forever. His kingdom shall never be destroyed, and his dominion shall be to the end. He delivers and rescues. He works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth. He who has saved Daniel from the power of the lions. So this Daniel prospered during the reign of Darius and the reign of Cyrus the Persian. May the Lord add blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. So we looked before at how prayer shapes people's lives. My second talk I want to do this morning is how prayer saves. Daniel was in danger in the story. But the men found him praying and asking God for help, not running away or hiding, and defiantly not praying to King Darius. That meant he would face the consequences. And the penalty was to be flung into a den of hungry lions. How would we feel in Daniel's situation where people are out to get you? I know I would be pretty upset or pretty scared at the consequences. We aren't told how Daniel felt. But we can see from his actions that he was calm and collected. He knew he had done nothing wrong. Daniel showed no panic. Just absolute trust in God. Why? This could be because he had spent time in prayer. He knew he was not alone. That God was with him all of the way. He didn't go to the king for help. He asked God for help. Prayer helps us to know God and what he is like. Remember again the Bible verse we read at the start of our service. Let's read it again. It says this in Psalm 145 verses 18 and 19. The Lord is close to everyone who prays. To all who truly pray to him. He gives those who fear him what they want. He listens when they cry and he saves them. God was close to Daniel. And that made all the difference. We don't read of Daniel protesting or making a fuss. Unlike King Darius, who is now in a panic. Daniel's praise didn't just save Daniel. But there's a twist in the story. Prayer saved the king and others as well. Darius liked Daniel. And the Bible tells us he tried to rescue him. And the Bible says he made every effort until sunset to save him. And yet he came to realize that even as the king, 
He couldn't do anything. He had to carry out the law he had issued, as royal decrees could never be changed. Even though he was king, he was powerless. He had to throw Daniel into the lion's den. He couldn't rescue him. Daniel, only God could. Suddenly, as Daniel was being flung into the den of lions, King Darius realized Daniel's hope was in God. And he shouted, he shouted, May the God you serve all the time save you. King Darius showed the first step it takes to truly trusting God, recognizing that God is in control and we are not. He alone can save. So after a sleepless night, after a hungry night, the king hurried to the lion's den, desperately hoping that God had heard his prayer. And God had. Miraculously, Daniel was completely safe and unharmed. What an amazing sight that must have been. God had saved him. God had heard both Daniel and Darius' prayer. The impossible had happened. Daniel was alive, not dead. Only God could have done this. Darius had seen firsthand the power of God and he was overjoyed. And so Darius came to trust in God for himself. But not only that, he declared that everyone else in the kingdom should also worship God too. Let me say this. Let me encourage you. Whatever you're going through, whether you're starting school, whether you've started school, whether you're going back to university or whether you have to take a year off, whether you're starting work or that you perhaps you're struggling at work. Let me encourage you by saying this. If I've learned anything in my life and if I've learned anything in the Bible, prayer saves. Prayer saved Daniel. Prayer saved King Darius. What an encouragement to us today. But also prayer shapes us to become more like Jesus Christ. Prayer saves, prayer shapes. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are a God of hope and love. We thank you that you are a God who is in control. We thank you, Lord Heavenly Father, that even though we may not be able to meet face to face, we can still worship you and we can still pray to you. And I pray, Lord Heavenly Father, for those services that we hope to start where we're able to meet up in different ways. But I pray, Lord Heavenly Father, that whatever we're going through today, that we learn the habit um, of our spiritual lives. Lord, we learn the habit of meeting with you in prayer. And just whatever we go through, whether we're on the mountaintop or in the valley, whether we are uh, full of joy or full of sorrow, that in all things we develop the habit of praying to you and coming to you first and foremost. You are a God who listens and cares and we love you, Lord. Amen. No.
let's bring this morning's service to a close in prayer. Let's pray together. Dear God, we thank you so much for our school systems. We thank you for the opportunity of education that we have in our country. We really, really pray for all of those who've been returning and are about to return to school. We pray that you will have your hand over them and that you'll be guiding them and blessing them along the way. We know that at the moment things are tough and this is not going to be an easy term. So we pray that you will be with us all as we return to our schools and that we ourselves can remember to turn to you in those difficult times, in those great times as well, but that we're always looking to call on you and we're not forgetting that you need to be at the centre of our lives. Lord, we pray that we can draw close to you In Jesus' name, amen.